Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. I apologize in advance. This one will be long. I feel like you need to know the backstory to our relationship to fully understand the pain and suffering I'm putting the love of my life through right now. So please bear with me. I'm gonna keep typing until I get everything out. Me, 28 female, and my husband, 29 male, let's call him Mike, have been married for five years now, together almost seven years. When I first met him, we were at a college party. I could tell he was uncomfortable, he's shy and hates crowds, so I decided to do the nice thing and talk to him. It was not awkward like I was expecting, and we ended up staying together for the rest of the party. The next time we saw each other was a month later. I ran into him at a Whole Foods near campus. Again, conversation between us was easy, and I actually found myself flirting with him, which really surprised me. Up until that point in my life, I had never really considered dating a black guy. I'm white. It's not that I didn't find them attractive, I just never really had the opportunity. I went to a predominantly white school, so I only ever dated white guys before. When he could tell I wasn't going to leave him alone, he shyly asked me to walk with him so he could finish shopping. After we both checked out, I asked him for his number, and he got the most adorable look of disbelief on his face. He really thought I was playing with him, but after assuring him I wasn't, he gave it to me. I wanted to ask him out then and there, but I decided I had shocked him enough already. I did text him that night, though. After a few weeks of calling and texting each other, he called one day and actually surprised me by asking me out. I immediately said yes. Even though I could tell he was still a little hesitant around me, the date was perfect. Before my husband, I had dated three other people, and intimacy was something that happened early on in the relationship, but not with Mike. I tried to initiate after our second date, but he politely turned me down. I'll admit I was a little hurt, so I asked him why. We clearly liked each other. He told me that he had only dated one other person before me and that they did things but never went all the way. I told him that that wasn't a problem for me. I wasn't really that experienced, but I knew what I liked. I said we could learn together. He then said that he was conflicted because of always telling himself he would wait until marriage and failing with his first girlfriend. Then, eventually, he changed his mind and decided that he had to have real feelings for the girl before he considered having intimacy with her. I knew he didn't mean it to hurt me, but it did. He could immediately see the hurt on my face and assured me that he did, in fact, have real feelings for me. He was just rambling. We then agreed that we would wait. A few weeks later, I brought him to a gathering a friend of mine was having. Like I mentioned above, he's shy and hates crowds, but he still came because it was important to me that he knows my friends. Most of them were nice, but some of them acted weird towards Mike. Surprised. Eventually, one of them got bold enough to actually say something. A girl who I thought to be one of my best friends asked me, this is the guy you've been ditching us for? You could do so much better. That's when I realized what the weird looks were. I looked at my then-boyfriend, Mike, and saw the hurt on his face. I told that friend, no, he's the one who could do so much better. I'm lucky to even have him. We didn't even stay after that. I found out from a real friend that some of our mutual friends thought I was too good-looking for Mike. I couldn't believe it. I never even thought of that. To me, he was one of the most handsome men I had ever met, and I was the lucky one. I called my mom after that to tell her what happened. She didn't interrupt me once while I rambled in anger, and when I finished, she said, You're in love with him, honey. When are you bringing him home to meet us? I told her that I couldn't possibly be in love with him. We had only known each other at this point for about three months and had been dating for almost two. She just said you can't really help when you fall in love with someone, and it sounded like I was to her. That's how it was with my father, she said. My mother and father have had a very loving marriage, something I have wanted for myself after seeing them so happy together. 
I went to his apartment unannounced after talking to my mom and asked him to just hold me. Eventually, he got me to tell him what was wrong. I told him everything but what my mom said about being in love. I wasn't ready to say that four-letter word yet. He told me he actually thought I was way out of his league and might leave him when someone better looking comes along. I've always known that people considered me better looking than most, but to hear him say that broke my heart. I told him that that's not true, and that I didn't want anyone else. It went a little back and forth from there until I thought he accepted what I said as the truth. I wanted him and only him. That night we had intimacy for the first time. Even though it was a little clumsy from his inexperience, I enjoyed it better than with any other guy I had ever been with. Now I know it was the love I had for him. Afterwards, when we were cuddling, he brought up our earlier conversation. He told me that one of his biggest fears is being cheated on, and knowing what people thought of our relationship brought that fear out even more. Hearing him talk like that made me so mad. All I could think to myself was how could people not see how good of a person he was and focus just on his looks. Eventually, after many conversations and me reassuring him, he truly accepted it as the truth. I wanted him and nobody else. A couple of months later, we went to visit my parents. At the time, I was an out-of-state student. This trip meant so much to both of us. Up until this point in my life, I had never brought a guy home. So my parents knew this was serious. When we got there, he surprisingly got on really well with everyone. I told my parents in advance that Mike was a little shy. So they didn't pounce on him when I introduced them to each other. That may have been why they got on so well. My baby brother, who was two at the time, and Mike were basically inseparable for our entire trip. I could tell he would be an amazing father. I told him that I loved him for the first time while watching them play. We got married two years later. After we had our first baby, Mike started to travel a lot for his business. He offered to let his business partner do most of the traveling so he could stay home with us, but I told him that we would be fine. He was only gone for maybe two or four days at a time. One time when he was away, I was hanging out with my friend Rachel, and someone I didn't know joined us. I later found out that this was a new friend of Rachel. At first, we got along fine. Then she started asking me questions about my marriage, if I was happy, if Mike still treated me the same. I didn't think much of it at the time, thinking they were just curious since neither of them was married. I answered honestly, saying yes, I was still very happy, and Mike treated me the same as before. Then things took a turn. They started suggesting that maybe I wasn't as happy as I thought. Normally, if someone talks badly about my relationship, I get defensive, but this time, I decided to ask why. They said Mike had basically abandoned me after our daughter was born. As I mentioned before, he offered to stay home, but I knew his work was important, so I told him to go. I'll admit, I did resent him a little for leaving me with all the responsibilities, but he was never gone for long. They went on to say that maybe Mike didn't love me the same way anymore and was using these trips to get away. Deep down, I knew that wasn't true, but a small part of me started to wonder. I was stressed out, taking care of our baby and managing the household. After talking to Mike about it, he arranged for a maid service to come in once a week and we decided to hire a live-in nanny. Even though Mike was doing all the right things, those doubts kept creeping in, especially when I hung out with Rachel and her friend again. Then one day, I forgot to put my wedding ring back on, and while we were out, a guy at the restaurant hit on me. I glanced at my bare hand and thought, what harm could a little flirting do? He eventually convinced me to go to the bar with him. Normally, Mike and I aren't heavy drinkers, but I let this guy talk me into having more than I usually do. Nothing happened that night, but I gave him my number. Around that time, Mike was especially busy, so we weren't talking as much. A few days later, the guy called and asked me out. I said yes. By the end of that night, one thing led to another, and I cheated on my perfect husband. About ten minutes into it, I fully realized what I was doing. I stopped immediately and told him I was married to a man I loved more than life itself. 
I said this was wrong and that I had to leave. I never told anyone about it. When my got back, I completely rededicated myself to our marriage, and I haven't strayed since. When I came back to stand in front of my husband, he handed me his phone and told me to press play. The man I cheated with had recorded us without my knowledge. The video confirmed everything I told Mike about stopping it, but seeing it was still devastating. I will never be able to unsee that. The woman I love with another man. This was three years ago, babe, and I haven't strayed since. It meant nothing. How long ago it was doesn't matter. You had another man's mouth on yours and his inside you. How would you feel if I went and slept with another woman? Heartbroken. Exactly. I never felt the need to go and seek attention elsewhere. Even when you were distant. You know why? Because I believed if we worked on it, I'd get my wife back. I thought I did, but you just felt guilty. No, no, no. That's not it. You know I love you more than anyone on this earth. I don't see how you could love me so much and still do what you did. I'll do anything to fix this. Maybe we can try couples therapy, or I want a divorce. I won't put either of us through the pain of trying to fix this. You know I'll never get that video out of my head. No matter how much I want to hate you, I just can't. For some reason, I still love you. I kept begging him to reconsider, but eventually, he said I could stay in the master bedroom while he'd go sleep in one of the guest rooms. A few minutes after he left, my mom came into the room. I didn't want to tell her what I did, but at the same time, I needed her advice. I could see the disappointment in her eyes, but then she told me something that shocked me, my father cheated on her, twice. I had no idea. I remember them going through a rough patch, but they never separated. I asked how they fixed things, and she said couples therapy helped, but it was also my father's determination to rebuild trust that saved their marriage. Then she asked me if I had told Mike about the pregnancy. Honestly, in all the chaos, I forgot. All I could think about was losing him. She said I should tell him, but now I feel like he'll think I'm trying to manipulate him into staying. I've known I was pregnant for a few days, so it's not like this was planned. I truly regret everything I've done. I just don't know what to do next. How do I fix this? How can I make him see that I'm still the woman he fell in love with? Well, folks, that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.